platypus, platypuses, platypi, platyphodes, duck beavers. They are weird and they are epic. And they are known to call the eastern coast of Australia and some of its islands home. But there have been reports of them living in isolated populations in the Americas, speckled across the remnants of a range that surpasses their known prehistoric territories. Welcome to Cryptid Corner, the series All Things Cryptids, and today we're going to look into the phantom platypuses of the Americas. The platypus is like the go-to example of just how weird an animal can get. They are nocturnal mammals with an otter-like body, a duck-like bill, and a beaver-like tail that lays eggs, possesses a venomous spindle on its hind leg, looks for food like a shark, can produce milk without nipples, doesn't have a stomach, and is found in the land down under, the wild wilderness of Australia. And also, since we're talking about platypuses, in 2020, it was discovered that platypuses glow green under ultraviolet light, which is insanely wild given Perry the platypus, who is probably the most iconic platypus ever conceived, has been given green coloration. And even though Perry was colored green just because it looked cool and it made him stand out, it's still a very interesting coincidence that I think about now and again. And now that we're talking about the platypus, I, damn right I'm going to tell you. Given all these platypus facts, it is not surprising that they were once considered cryptids, thought to be some sick joke from a taxidermist who stitched together multiple animals. Many con men would do stuff like this in order to make a quick buck off of a museum or a circus show, but in a twist that nobody outside of Australia would believe, they turned out to be as real as rain. Platypuses and echidnas make up the order of Monotremata, which is the oldest surviving order of mammals that we know of, and their story is fittingly quite a bizarre one. It is thought that the monotremes split off from other mammals around, you know, ages ago, before marsupials and placental mammals split from each other, around either 230 or 163 million years ago, when dinosaurs roamed the earth and mammals were restricted to small sizes living in their shadows. Monotremes originated in the supercontinent of Gondwana, which contained South America, Australia, Africa, Zealandia, Arabia, India, and even Antarctica. It is theorized that the monotremes had evolved in what is now Australia, sometime in the Jurassic, spreading into South America and crossing Antarctica, kind of, you know, the opposite of how marsupials got into Australia through South America by traveling through Antarctica. Although monotremes could have originated in South America as well, or even Antarctica, although there is pretty much no information that really supports this. And the oldest known monotreme is Hainolophos, a four-inch-long mammal that lived about 123 million years ago and was found in Victoria, Australia. These monotremes were very unplatypus-like, possessing no beak, unfortunately, instead having a very strong toothed bite, probably having a snout. Around 100 million years ago, the Strapodon, which is only known from a partial jaw fossil, shows just enough to suggest that it possessed a bill similar to a modern platypus. This is due to a cavity in the jaw where a nerve would run, and this is found in modern platypuses today, and is used for them to hunt in the water by sensing electronic signals similar to how sharks hunt their food. Other monotremes around this time have also been described, including the Dara Dara, a very fun name to say, which, as of this year, has been proposed to be the oldest known platypus. By the end of the Cretaceous, monotremes had managed to reach South America, and likely Antarctica, with the remains of Patagorhynchus surviving as oldest known monotreme, and the first of two monotremes that have been found outside of Australia, inhabiting the late Cretaceous Patagonian wilderness of Santa Cruz, Argentina. The other, more well-known monotreme, the Monotrematum, dates back to about 61 million years ago, following the collapse of the dinosaurs in the Salamanca Formation in Patagonia, Argentina. 
These monotremes were very platypus-like, but still retained teeth, actually having quite large teeth for their size. Around this time, the fragments of Gondwana began to drift apart, eventually floating off to be their own isolated continents. But around 50 million years ago, marsupials would make their way into Australia, where they would produce Australia's most iconic mammals and would dominate the continent. You'd believe that the marsupials would be fully capable of outcompeting the monotremes, but the protoplatypuses filled a niche that most marsupials struggle to fill, a semi-aquatic lifestyle. The most iconic feature of the marsupial, the pouch, is the greatest reason for this, as all marsupials, except for the water possum, cannot firmly seal their pouches in order to prevent water from entering in and flushing out their little joeys. And along with this, their nocturnal activity and egg-laying ability that allows them to store their young away into riverside burrows has left them a niche that is hard for even the wackiest animals of Australia could fill in. There is a very large gap between 48 and 17 million years ago where platypuses and echidnas are thought to have split apart and become their own weird-ass things. But around 25 million years ago, large monotremes called the Abdurodons would retain the teeth like many other primitive platypuses had. However, they would take a full advantage out of their circumstances and achieve sizes that dwarfed modern platypuses, with the Abdurodon Farakushild reaching lengths of about three feet long and feeding on hard-shelled animals like turtles and crustaceans. Around 9 million years ago, the earliest modern platypuses of the genus Ornithorhynchus would emerge, characterized by a lack of teeth in their bill, instead of the other platypuses prior that had teeth and all sorts of weird junk in their mouth going on. Unfortunately, around 5 million years ago, the Abdorodons would go extinct, leaving us in a world robbed of platypus crocodiles. Fortunately, we would be temporarily compensated 2.5 million years ago with the largest monotreme that we know of, the Murray Glocknus, which was a giant echidna that reached about 3.3 feet in length and weighed up to 60 pounds. But because we just can't have shit, you know, we can't behave, they went extinct about 11,000 years ago, towards the end of the Ice Age, when the bulk of Earth's megafauna would go extinct. We were truly robbed of this beautiful creature here, man. Also, all of these names have been so hard to pronounce. Oh my god, why, why do monotremes have such weird names? Despite only being found in Australia and parts of Tasmania and some of the neighboring islands today, there have been sightings of what could be platypuses in other parts of the world, with the regions of focus being south and interestingly north america in this video in the 1970s in tierra del fuego at the southernmost tip of south america an amateur naturalist would spot platypuses the naturalist would report this encounter to michael andrews a producer for bbc who would eventually report this to j richard greenwell who believes the sightings to be a surviving relative of monotremata which hasn't been discovered around the time of the sightings. The sighting happened sometime in the early 70s, but uh, this platypus was discovered in 1975, just to make that clear. Moving up to North America, though, in the state of Colorado, there has been a bizarre volume of platypus sightings near the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. The accounts start sometime around the late 1910s when, according to Florence Hayes Turner, the head of the American Museum of Natural History, Henry Fairfield Osborne, had visited her family ranch, and according to her father, he had organized a survey of the Mount Blanca area in pursuit of platypuses. In the 1920s, when a ranger named Paul Gilbert would receive sightings of platypuses in Lily Lake, him and his boss would have some, you know, troubles with this at first. They weren't buying it. But eventually the two would be convinced that platypuses had actually called this lake home after a couple visits and a couple more eyewitness testimonies. 
Gilbert would search the lake routinely, even acquiring a platypus trapping permit, but he would have no luck in catching one. In 1966, a pair of local fishermen would spot a platypus clumsily waddling the shoreline of Wichell Lake. They would report their sighting to the American Museum of Natural History, but they would be laughed out by the officials at the museum. And over the years, there have been platypus sightings across the United States and the world as a whole, but they were often just one-off sightings and could be easily written off as hoaxes. A few that are somewhat notable include the mention of duck beavers that are said to live in Manitoba, Canada, a fearsome critter known as the Bilbad, which is entirely fictional but coincidentally is kind of described like a platypus, and a sighting of a six-foot-long platypus in Alaska, far larger than any monotreme that has ever been known to exist. And not a cryptid based in America, but there is a cryptid in New Zealand's folklore known as the Waitereke, which could be a platypus living in New Zealand, but I feel like that's a bit of a rabbit hole to go down in another video because it's it's not as clear cut as this thing is just like a platypus. Uh, we'll, we'll explore that on another day, trust me. Now that we have gathered up all of our platypus sightings, what can we make of it? It is pretty weird that the bulk of these platypus sightings occurred in Colorado of all places. However, platypuses tend to do well in cold mountainous bodies of water with the platypuses of Tasmania, which is the coldest state in Australia, thriving and growing larger than other platypuses. And this makes the mention of duck beavers in Canada pretty interesting as well. Although I couldn't really find much on them outside of mentions from Strange Animals Seldom Seen by John Worms, which documented many obscure cryptids in Manitoba, and allegedly one of them was caught at a beaver dam, but I couldn't find too much information on this creature. But uh, you know what can be caught at beaver dams and looks like a beaver? A damn beaver. <laughs> the Alaska sighting feels, you know, the least likely out of all of them that, uh, you know, I could find. But there's just, there's no way something that, a platypus that big could grow up there. I legit think that this dude saw a bear with a fish in his mouth at this point. But I mean, hey, you, you don't know. If ma Monotremes managed to cross Gondwana before its continents had split apart and becoming fully separated, then why couldn't surviving platypuses make it up into North America, huh? After all, ground sloths, you know, my favorites, had managed to island hop up the Caribbean on multiple occasions. One of the largest problems with this stems from just how few monotreme fossils can actually be found in South America. Even though the fossils can't paint a full picture of the landscape, the lack of fossils seems to imply that they didn't last too long in Patagonia millions of years ago. In order for them to have made it all the way up into North America, they would have had to either, you know, had to get rafted all the way there from Australia or move up North America some three million years ago during the Great American Interchange when the Isthmus of Panama formed. I just love saying the Isthmus of Panama. And if we can't even prove that they survived in the southernmost tips of South America tens of millions of years ago, then it is highly unlikely that they managed to reach Colorado. I do think it is more likely that they had managed to have survived in isolated pockets of Tierra del Fuego and other parts of Patagonia, perhaps even until relatively recently, but we just don't have the evidence to prove that they survived any longer than we did or that they could still be alive today. Now, going into this as well, I thought there was a pretty clear-cut alternative explanation that these platypuses were exotic imports or were released from circuses or zoos or something. But looking more into it, this would also be extremely unlikely because platypuses are heavily regulated and are illegal to keep as pets. Outside of Australia, only two platypuses who can be found at the San Diego Zoo have been kept in captivity outside of Australia. Just two. This is mainly due to just how hard it is to maintain a platypus in captivity, with 80% of captive platypuses dying within their first year. 
And given how hard it is just to keep them alive when you've got a whole ass group of people taking care of them, then imagine how unlikely it would be for them to just survive after being dumped in a lake in Colorado. And looking into zoo escapes, I did find one story on a platypus that managed to fake being pregnant and then mysteriously uh, managed to escape the zoo, Perry the Platypus style. That's pretty cool. Uh, but a lot of these sightings could also just be missed sightings of baby beavers or moles in the water. Yeah, but you didn't think they could swim, huh? But the highest likelihood, at least regarding the U.S.-based sightings, is that they are all just hoaxes. Either to bust some fool's chops and get a good laugh out of their reactions, or to promote tourism in their communities. After all, if I was on the edge of visiting a lake, you know, it was 50-50, I'd go either way. But you told me there were platypuses in that lake? I, I might just have to rent out the room for a whole week, you know? I might have to go platypus hunting, I have to go find one, get a little, go catch a little Pokemon. Platypuses are some of the weirdest animals to ever be found, even being cryptids until scientists have actually managed to find them alive and well in Australia. Regarding the North American platypuses, as far as I'm concerned, there are only two alive in America, and you could probably go look at them right now, as the San Diego Zoo has a platypus camera on their website that you can go check out. And uh, the Tierra del Fuego platypus, which is the main reason I started this video and was originally going to be the sole focus of the video is also unlikely to be alive, but it still is quite a coincidence that the platypus was reported right before the monotrematum fossils were discovered, not far from the areas of the sightings as well. Perhaps in isolated pools of the hidden mountains in Patagonia, platypuses have lived undetected by man full-on Perry the Platypus style. But if this isn't the case, at least the platypuses we know and love are still here today and are as weird as they ever will be. And that's going to do it for the Tierra del Fuego platypus and the Colorado platypus, which I did not know about. I, I originally planned this just to be a small video, but every video that I plan to be a small video ends up being a pretty sizable video which i mean hey i'm not complaining i'm not complaining but i'd like to thank you all for watching very interesting subject to look into and uh, i'm gonna keep it real i just spent a lot of this research phase just studying platypus lore studying monotreme lore looking into the many species and stuff like the the, the cool abdorodons you know it is wild that we had pig size echidnas and crocodile platypuses and we never got to see them that is just so unfortunate but you got to see this video so if you got this far i'd like to say thank you for watching if you like the video leave a like make sure to comment down below what you thought about it and if you have any suggestions i'm open i'm all ears when it comes to suggestions uh and of course if you like this content make sure to subscribe and ring that bell and as always, I will see you in the next one.